What's good, y'all? Black and Indy, we are back. Still season six, episode five now, I think. My brain is completely off today. Y'all might notice that, but I think this is season five. Uh, season six, episode season, five. What she said. Uh, as always, my name is Isaiah. I'm Takira. This is Black and Indy. Uh, today, we wanted to do like sort of a special episode because this episode should be released on the literal last day of Black History Month, February 28th. So. We wanted to do like a nice little special Black History Month episode, kind of talk about a few things regarding Black history. And so that's kind of what this whole episode is planned on. I think we'll go ahead and just start it off, I suppose. Yeah. So first we kind of wanted to talk about um, the importance of Black History Month and also kind of like our experiences in the past of Black History Month, especially pertaining to like K through 12 system, uh, cause we feel like that was really important to talk about. So I guess I can go first. Um, Black History Month is very important because for whatever reason, we were only given the shortest month of the year to celebrate our own history, <laughs> which is... Something we could talk about in itself, but we won't yeah. go into that today. Actually, we might as well. All right, <laughs> go on then. Uh, but you know, that I feel like in and of itself is disgusting. Like, we shouldn't have... First of all, black history, we it should be celebrated every day. Like, that's just first and foremost. But then to give us the shortest month of the year, literally, like, that in and of itself is ridiculous. Um, especially because black history is so expansive. Mm. Like especially in, here in the United States, we only focus on Black History Month. You know, it's mainly pertaining to African American history. Right. But Black history in and of itself is very expansive. You know, our history does not start in 1619. It doesn't start whenever you can go into like the 1500s. I think 1528 maybe was when the first uh, like sort of slave ship got here at least. Um, at least the first enslaved Africans got here. Mm -hmm. you know, so we could talk about that. Um, but there's so much history before Black people got here to the United States, or to America at least. Obviously, that was involuntary and forcefully, but there's so much more history before that. And that's what I think is so important to kind of recognize with Black History Month. And I think we can maybe have like a special episode sometime in the future where we talk about, you know, black history before the African diaspora over here to the United mm. States, or over here to America. You can say the United States. It wasn't always the United States. Nope. But at least to, to mainland North America, mm -hmm. I can say that. Because um, there's so much history. And I, I remember too, someone in, the, uh, in our little Google form, they said that they really wanted us to talk about that too, so we should definitely do that in the future. Um, but I mean, Black History Month is, is very important, especially because it allows for us to acknowledge our history here in the United States, at least, um, you know, with African American history. And that's important because there is, I mean, black people have literally, like, built this country. We literally built this country from the ground up with the assistance of other minority groups who are also oftentimes very ignored, you know, like, just kind of just disregarded essentially. And so that's why this month is so crucial, really to just provide us with the opportunity to learn more about our history as black people and provide us with the opportunity to teach others, non-black people, more about our history too. And then in terms of just learning black history, in terms of specifically K through 12, that would be the one and only month where your teachers, your professors, whatever you want to call them, would end up going to that certain chapter in the American history book or whatever, <laughs> section of history you're in, just to specifically cater to black history per se, which one, half of it would be inaccurate, or they would sugarcoat so many things. Um, but it's also sad that throughout the entire academic school year, there's about one month that just specifically catered to our history. And it's not even the entire month. For me, what I remember is basically about two weeks out of the month, so half of the month. I get to learn about my history, completely unfair, completely inaccurate as well, and it's something that we need to work on. And going into that, we can talk about Florida, because mm. what, <laughs> Florida, what's going on? Y'all want to remove the little bit and the little pieces and the little sources that current African American students have. This is what we're doing. I, let me, mm, I'm going to keep it calm. I'll hop into it's alive. To, to let you calm down. Yeah. I'll hop mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, what's going on in Florida, you know, those of y'all that know, uh, those of y'all that have been keeping up with Black and D, especially last semester with season five, y'all know I'm from Texas. And the things that Florida is doing is very disturbing to me because I know that's the same thing that Texas is going to be doing uh, sometime very soon. Mm. But at least what's going on in Florida, I think, is very disturbing because it shows a very clear attempt to essentially disembark and devalue black history here in this country. And the reason why that's so like disheartening, not even disheartening, but like disgusting, I would say, 
is because there's so much history, like we said before, there's so much history that black Americans have contributed to this country that by essentially eliminating the opportunity to even have an AP African American Studies course, it essentially just makes almost all the history like just, just go in vain. Especially in Florida where there's so many attempts to cut off real history and only teach like white, whitewashed history essentially. Yeah. Uh, history that the Florida state government believes should be taught. Whenever you see like what's going on in Florida, it, it can only make you just like enraged, like kind of like what you were just, you know, displayed. Mm -hmm. It can only make you enraged, it can only make you angered because it's such a big problem. And you know, whenever I was growing up in the K-12 system, with Black History Month, that was the only real opportunity that we had to have a sort of, not even a conversation, because I remember all that they would do, especially in high school, was they would go into the announcements, in the morning announcements, and they would like read a little mini biography about a black important figure, like a famous uh, figure. And it was always the same people. It was always Harriet Tubman, MLK. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Most of the time they avoided Malcolm X and then Rosa Parks. And what was even more disturbing about that was we'd go through one week of five different people. The next week, they'd do maybe three different people. They were all known like black figures, not anyone that like you would really have to like kind of scratch your head of who is that, or you just didn't really know. They were all known figures that literally every, anyone who opened like a history textbook, you at least you heard would of know them. the name. And then after those, what was that, that's three days. After those eight days, essentially, they started recycling the same people. So in the next week, it would be here's another biography about MLK. Here's another biography about Rosa Parks. So they didn't care to put an effort on finding someone who. No, like, it was always it would, they would just repeat the same stuff. And so I don't know if they still do that now um, at my high school, my old high school, but at least how it was then when I was there, that's how it was. And that's disturbing because we don't have an opportunity to really learn about, you know, these sort of instances. And I remember wanting to learn more about African American history. Mm. The only way I could really do that because in the Texas curriculum, the Texas State Education Curriculum, you don't really learn about like real history. Nope. Everything is essentially very whitewashed, especially nowadays where and we talked about this in a previous episode. I'm not sure which one it was. I told you I'm tired. So I don't remember what episode it was. But we talked about in the previous episode where Texas was banning, you know, a lot of books that pertain to black history, like To Kill a Mockingbird, or like books that really show the black experience. And so I know that's really going on right now, especially in Texas. I know the Texas State government signed legislation to where, oh my goodness, it makes like it extremely difficult to talk about slavery and white supremacy. I think you can't even really even say the words white supremacy or white supremacists even mm. anymore while you're like teaching in Texas. I'll have to look that up again to make sure, but I believe there's legislation like that right now. And then whenever you see what's going on in Florida, it's so disgusting. I think what's even more disgusting is the fact that their justification for banning AP, you know, African American history, they know it's racist, but they don't want to be openly racist about it. They don't want to say, oh, we're banning it because it's just black. We're talking about black history. So what their justification for it was, was that well, it well. incorporated like queer theory and that it was essentially indoctrinating children to think differently about their sexualities. Which, <laughs> I'm like. It was so infuriating. Okay. But at the same time, like even if you want to like acknowledge that, right? It doesn't mean you just get rid of the entire program in and of itself. If anything, you can change it or alter it, but getting rid of it, completely irrational. And think about the kids that are currently in school who wanted to take that. Mm -hmm. You're making it seem like that history, like their history is irrelevant, which then therefore makes them seem like they're irrelevant. Mm -hmm. You're truly doing this, one, just mainly because you're racist and you're not thinking about the people who it's actually affecting, which also makes me upset. Because if I had the, I didn't even know that class existed. I'm from Arizona, very racist, didn't even know. The only AP classes I knew were, you know, English, language, you know, the, the basic AP classes everyone knows. If I knew that existed, I definitely would have taken it. Especially going to the school that I went to, I have no other, like, there is no other chance for me to expand out and learn about my history unless I did it myself and my mom told me. So that was something that I definitely would have taken advantage of. And now knowing that these kids, who actually want to take the chance and take the step forward to you know, actually learn about their history, where they came from, where their families came from. They can't even do that. Ridiculous. And I think Ridiculous. like even more, their justification of it being, oh, you know, this has queer theory and oh, they're trying to indoctrinate, they're trying to like inject this LGBTQ plus stuff, which is so unnecessary. It's like even then, Black history has a lot to do with LGBTQ plus history as That's well. That's exactly. And especially when you think of things like drag, for example, 
there was, drag was literally created by you know, like a lot of African Americans. Exactly. You know, so it's like things like that. That's a part of history. Like that's not something you can just you know just ignore or just say, oh well, yeah, that's that's the reason why we're just getting rid of it completely. And it's disgusting. Like there's so much of black kids. There's so much. Oh my goodness! Like black Americans have contributed so much to this country. Mm -hmm. And even whenever you think of things like, like drag or other aspects of the LGBTQ plus community, it's like a lot of those things are derived from black people or they, or they were created by black people. And that's what I think is, is so disturbing. And I think what was even more disturbing for me was seeing that they said that um, AP African American Studies, I wish I remember the exact quote, but it was something like it doesn't really contribute to any sort of valuable education for students. But what was even more interesting about that was that they kept European history, they kept, um, it was another history class that literally you could argue, like, why are you holding, why are you allowing this, but you're not allowing black history? Like, it's, clear, thing it's, is, it's a clear attempt. They're not acknowledging that African American history is the basis for European history. Mm -hmm. A lot of the things that the famous European, like Thomas Edison, he wasn't the one and only one who was working on the light bulb, the only person to get it working. There was an African American, I forgot his name, but he had the essential start. Mm -hmm. But no one knows that. Mm -hmm. Y'all love peanut butter, right? <laughs> Guess who made it? African-American man. George Washington Carver. <laughs> a lot of things that are used day to day, um, like an ironing board, African-American woman, a lot of things that people use day to day, made by African-Americans, but no one wants to sit there and acknowledge it. They want to turn it around and make it known by the <clears throat> non-African-American, and that's what we're gonna say today, and make it seem like they were the one who made it, no a lot of the groundbreaking things that we use today, a lot of the groundbreaking history that you know of European history is because of African American history. But no one wants to acknowledge that, which is also another problem. I think another thing to kind of look at too is that a lot of the basis for European history is kind of, if I remember correctly, um, it focuses a lot on like obviously like Europeans and all that stuff, but it also shows like the European diaspora into the United States too, or into at least mainly North America. Mm -hmm. But the point still stands that if you're going to allow something like that to be taught, but then you're not going to allow African American history to be taught, like it's very clear there's, that there's racial bias behind it. Like it's very clear, it's a very racist policy. Yes. I think that's, that's so disturbing because, like we said, like Black History Month, this is a Black History Month themed episode, you know. For a lot of people, Black History is Black History Month is the only time that a lot of people really learn about Black History because it's the one time, especially in like K through 12, where you're pretty much like forced to sit down. You have to hear the announcements. You have to, you know, you have to go on Twitter, go on Instagram, and you're constantly seeing people post about it. So it's right. the one time where people are really have that opportunity. But to have a course that's designed to be, I believe, a year-long course, as most mm -hmm. AP courses are. I have a year-long course where people are constantly learning about black history, where you're constantly learning about the contributions of black people. And then to say that serves absolutely no educational value, it's like at what point are we going to acknowledge that this is clearly just an attack on black people? Like it's clearly an attack on black people and black history, and people are using this ideology of like wokeness. You're right. trying to make everything so woke. You know, they're gonna teach, they're gonna make um, white kids feel bad about slavery, and they're gonna make white kids think that that they're enslavers and that they're racist. And it's like that's not even how it is. And that's, that's not how it is. I don't know why that is the first thought that comes to mind. That is not how it is. It's just educating them about the history of the land you're currently on. That is it. And it just so happens that that course is specifically catered to African American history, but it's not to make white kids feel bad about their, what your ancestors did is not you. You do not have to embody that, but it still is important for you to know. Yeah. We talked about that on the episode last semester too. Um, we really, we really drove it down that point. That especially if the course is taught correctly, kids are not going to think that they're like enslavers. And especially when there are people said they're mainly, per, they're mainly arguing that for like, like little kids in elementary school. Mm. This AP course is for high school students. It, so like at high school, you have a sort of, you have a different understanding. Like your brain is more developed than like a second or third grader. So you're always gonna understand like, okay, yes, I'm not in a slaver. Okay, yes, I'm not racist. Right. But like at the same time, like it's, it's important history to be taught. And I think another thing that I really wanted to touch on too, um, that I touched on when the Morsia was here, my, so I need a little, more, a little bit more woke now. You know, okay, you making connections, yeah. You know, um, <laughs> One thing that we talked about with Imorja was how whenever he did his project on, not his project, but his lesson on HBCUs for his, his white students over there at Emory University, I spoke on the fact that in my Intro to African Studies course here, my freshman year, 
there was a lot of white students who didn't know anything about, you know, like black history whatsoever. They didn't know like the mm. basic facts about slavery, the basic facts about, you know, civil rights movement. Mm. And I spoke on that. And the reason why I felt like I wanted to connect that back to today's episode is that whenever we look at, you know, Black History Month, whenever we look at things like Florida banning AP, African American history, the reason why that's so important is because these students in Florida are going to go K through 12, that's 12, 13 years, without learning real American history and without learning like real African American history. They're not going to understand all the contributions that black people have made. They're not going to understand why there's a disproportionate amount of black people in prison. Right. Cars, they're not going to understand why there's a disproportionate amount of black people that are in poverty, that are in generational poverty, that are stuck like that. They're not going to understand that. Right. The reason why that's so important is because you, in order to understand how you live today, you have to understand the past that made today today. And it's, it's so, it, just, it, it really does frustrate me because I just, I, I just, I can't imagine, like I was exposed to African American history early on, obviously I'm black, but obviously not every black person is exposed to their own history early on. True. You know, but I was able to read uh, books on African American history, stuff like that. And so I had that sort of, that upper hand, that, that advantage to really learn about those things. But other people, especially in Texas or in Florida or other conservative red states, these, these kids are not going to have that sort of opportunity growing up. Now, it's going to get to the point where probably you can't even buy a book on Amazon without, if, if it's banned in that state. Right. And you might get arrested for that. You know, like who knows how things will, will occur sometime in the future. But the way that we're trending, that's how it's looking. And it's very disheartening to see, especially because, you know, I just, I can't imagine going 12, 13 years without learning the history of other people. And obviously, you know, we're really focusing on, you know, black history. We're blacks. We're going to focus on black history. Right. But at least learning about the contributions of, like, all other minority groups to this country. Because they are all essential and all important. Exactly. And that really bothers me. That really bothers me. What Florida's doing, it bothers me what Texas is doing. And it, it makes me nervous for this country moving forward. Y'all know in, uh, in a previous episode, I believe it was the episode on... Um, where Woke Goes to Die, that episode, y'all make sure y'all check that out. That was last Look at semester. Your memory coming back. <laughs> you know, that was the episode. Um, I spoke on the fact, see, now I just forgot my point. Look at that. My memory activated and then just <laughs> deactivated that quick. Dang. Um, let me see. Uh, the, the, the point that I, was, that I was making was what really bothered me is just how that's what it was. As a country, we're really moving backwards. You know, we're not allowing ourselves to move mm. forward. And I said that the R for Republican doesn't, shouldn't stand for Republican, it should stand for regression, because the, the Republican Party is the party of regression. Put that on a t-shirt. Stay coming Let, up with slogan. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you know, and, and, that, and that bothers me because I know growing up in Texas, I didn't always have the best education, especially when it came to history. And I know that now these students, current day, are gonna have an even worse education than I had. You know, I saw in Florida since they're they're wanting to ban like other things like the SAT and stuff like that. They want to create like a Christian exam, which yeah. just doesn't even make a lick of sense. At but. all, <laughs> Florida, y'all just gone through a lot, and y'all need to get it together. Mm -hmm. Especially when it's affecting the children that will be shaping the future of this country. Get it together. That's all I'm gonna say. I not, I have friends from Florida, and they may not be crazy, but I still tell them go home, and please do something with your state. Even I don't like Arizona, but we ain't we ain't as crazy as that. Like, um, come on, come on. And I think another thing I want to talk about too, I'm um, especially pertaining to Black history, but also just history in general, like all minority history. Um, one thing I really want to touch on was the things that the trends that we're seeing, especially in conservative states, of like banning you know real American history from being taught, mm. from whitewashing history, is really going to put a, a, a very big emphasis and priority on universities to then go out of their way and teach history courses, you know, as sort of like a requirement. And one thing that I've really wanted to, to see Notre Dame do, and I know that there's, there's talks of this, you know, like trying to, there's people trying to establish this, people that are trying to work on this. It's just very difficult to do, from mm -hmm. what I understand. But one thing that I really want to see a lot more of from Notre Dame and also other universities is making it a requirement to take a cultural history class as an undergraduate student. And the reason why that's so important is because here at the University of Notre Dame, we have to take two credits of philosophy and two credits of theology. Those are just requirements that every Notre Dame student, undergraduate student, has to do before they graduate. Yep. I feel like it gets to the point where if we can make those a requirement, why can we not make a cultural requirement for classes too? Because people need, and I don't care, like, obviously I'm gonna be biased towards intro to Afghan studies, you know, just like an intro course to 
a cultural, you know, or an or ethnic uh, or a racial, you know, sort of course. Right. You know, I, 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 at Notre Dame, I wouldn't even really care if it was an intro to Arabic studies, intro to Asian studies, intro to Latino studies. Like, I wouldn't care what it is. A sort of requirement in which students have to take an intro of courses to these, um, to, to some sort of ethnicity or race. Because it's important because, like we said, there's kids that are going K-12 through 12 without learning any form of real history. And the only reason why, like my intro to African studies class, it was a majority white class. But the only reason why they were in that class is because they chose to. Right. They could have gone their entire academic experience, K through 12, and their four years here at Notre Dame, without taking a single intro to African studies class, without taking a single other intro to ethnic or racial class. Right. They made that choice to sign up for that class because they wanted to learn more. Not everyone has the opportunity to make that choice. And some people, the real people that we, that we really need to be you know, trying to dig into, because they're the people that believe that like, racism doesn't exist, you know, black people aren't oppressed, right. the history of the past doesn't affect today. Those sort of people that we really want to like get to, they're obviously not going to sign up for those classes either. And something that the only way you could really create, like make change, especially at Notre Dame right, at the university level, whenever we're seeing the way that these Republican states are trending, is by making it a requirement. Or else we're going to live in a country where there's so a mass amount of people that literally have absolutely no knowledge of real American history right. besides the whitewashers they were taught, which is that white people invented everything, they enslaved black people, but then they freed them, and now black people are now equal to white people, and right. then that's life. Like that's and that's not that's not how it happened. Not at all. Mm -hmm. Not at all. And speaking of just Notre Dame history, uh, I mean not Notre Dame history, about Notre Dame and Black History Month, how do you think Notre Dame did overall? As a university, I'm not sure what they did. Now, as an organization, like other organizations, like I saw um, MSPS, mm. they did a lot. They had I think at least every day or every few days they were spotlighting black students. I thought that was really important to do because you know, like we're all contributing to the history, especially the black history of Notre Dame. Right. Um, I saw the Notre Dame graduates, the Black Graduate Student Association. Mm -hmm. They were doing a lot. They were actually them. I believe y'all to a BSA. Mm -hmm. um, were literally creating Instagram posts every day that was. You know, showing a, a black figure that contributed to to history in some sort of way, yep. and it wasn't like the standard Malcolm X. And okay, and there's nothing wrong like with those people. But those are people that we're always you know taught to learn about. Of course, I appreciate what y'all are doing. Really focusing on lesser known people, or other people who had significant contributions. I think one of the most recent ones that y'all had that really caught my eye. What, not even because it was like a lesser known person. This person was very known. But y'all covered uh, Mary J. Blige. Like hmm. I thought that was like that was cool because it's not something. Because if you're really... thinking within the black community, mm -hmm. everyone knows Mary J. Blige, mm -hmm. and there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. So we had to cover it. And so and that was cool, and that's that's some more known person. But obviously, like to non-black people, she may not be as known. Right. So, but y'all also covered y'all y'all co y'all. I can't even speak today. Oh my goodness. <laughs> y'all covered other people as long as well as the Notre Dame uh, Black Graduate Student Association. They covered a lot of lesser known people. I thought that was very important. I know on our Black and ND Instagram, y'all follow it, black underscore at ND. We also, we were reposting some of the things that we saw um, other organizations posting. But in regards to the University of Notre Dame itself, I'm not exactly sure what, the, did they make like the a one Instagram and only thing that or? The only thing that you would know about Notre Dame is Walk the Walk Week. Mm -hmm. And the only reason you know that is because they promote that same picture over and over <laughs> and over again. I'm not saying I'm sick of the picture because MLK is in it, but that is the one and only thing that they love to promote. They put it all over the little posters that you have when you're walking on the sidewalk. And for the people who haven't been to Notre Dame, you want to tell them what that picture is? <sighs> it is a picture of MLK shaking hands with Father Hesburgh. <laughs> just like this. Just this is this is what you will see every day during Walk the Walk Week, during Black History Month at the University of Notre Dame. It's just a simple. They promote it everywhere. But you know what? We can talk about it. Because if they promote that picture every day, wouldn't you think that they would have MLK Day, an official holiday? This was the first year in Notre Dame history where MLK Day was a holiday, where we did not have to go to school. Second. Second? They I did believe. that last year? Yeah, last year was the first year. Mm. Last year was the first year. Still, I've been here for three years. Freshman year, mm. Oh, no, you're right. It is two years because that's when we made the petition. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is, even though it is a holiday, we still have to make the day up. Mm -hmm. But not for the Catholic holidays that we have days off on. <laughs> we still gotta, we still don't go to school on the Catholic holidays and we don't make it up. But Emma Cody, we do. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, Notre Dame as a whole doesn't really do much. They promote the photo, promote Walk the Walk Week, and that's it. But as you said specifically, the black clubs on this campus are the ones that are always taking a step forward, always doing things to promote. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm a dude, I'm in, I'm in BSA, so I'm a little biased, <laughs> but black renaissance was amazing. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely amazing. I don't know if you, were, were you there? I did not get to attend. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, for those of you who were there and who weren't there, one, there's a video you can watch. I post, I'll give the link, y'all be able to see it. Please go check it out. Um, it was absolutely amazing. It showcased the African-American hair, uh, not just African-American, but you know, uh, the clothing, the different talents that African-Americans are known for, singing, dancing, we had tap dancing, we had skits, we touched on everything. And then in between, there were videos that talked about the African-American struggle. And you, you, it was absolutely amazing. And the next day after that, there was Coffee House, also beautiful. So you will be seeing all of the black clubs on campus doing things to promote Black History Month, but the university itself does not, which is also a problem because they like to promote how inclusive and diverse the university is. They love the diversity numbers. They love the diversity numbers, but they're not doing anything to help with the diversity on campus, which is a problem. I think to touch on something that you said too, you spoke on like Walk the Walk Week and MLK Day, like that's in January. So that's not even in, February for Black History. Exactly. And so I feel like that was important too, because I couldn't even really think about a, a time where I saw Notre Dame like actively acknowledging like this is Black History Month, let's get on celebrate, like here's what we're doing, you know, stuff like that. Right. I saw a lot of the other uh, multicultural clubs, especially black clubs, doing everything that we absolutely could in order to get that message out and sort of get people to like learn more about Black History Month, what it is, the importance of it, and like some important figures. And I thought that was, I thought that was really, really important. And I think, you know, on my behalf, obviously doing this Black and Indeed, we're doing this episode now. It'll come on the final day of Black History Month, which is kind of crazy the way that it worked out. Uh, but, you know, like, I'm one of the diversity commissioners from my dorm. Mm. And one thing that we're working on right now is we want to hold, we, we're going to hold a um, Black History Month event for the dorm that we're hoping we get some attendance for. It's very difficult to get a dorm full of white people to come to diversity events. Mm. But... We're really hoping to, you know, kind of do something like that. And the theme that I'm really, because I'm creating the event essentially, and we're probably going to do it a little on the last day of Black History Month too. Um, but the, the the sort of theme that we're that we're working on, myself and our other diverse commissioner, Walter. Shout out to him. He's another Black student in the dorm. Um, one thing that we're working on is creating a theme like the legacy of slavery. We felt like in a dorm like mine, which is predominantly white, as is every other dorm on campus. Um, Besides Morrissey, that's a <laughs> yeah, little mix sure. up in there. Uh, but at least in my dorm, one thing that um, we see a lot of is we have students who, um, we have a few students that are like openly racist, I guess I would say. Um, we had one student last year call, refer to black people as ghetto townies. Um, you know, so that was hmm. kind of crazy. But, um, so what we wanted to do was we kind of wanted to tap into some of the brains of some of these individuals in the dorm, whoever is willing to like actually show up. Because we know that a lot of these people in the dorm are conservatives. We know that some of them are going to believe that like racism does, doesn't exist on the level that we think it does. Um, some of them will argue that you know slavery is a thing of the past. And so luckily I had the opportunity to, in my American slavery class, shout out to Professor Sell. I don't know if he watches these, but shout out to him. <laughs> He's brand new this year. He's a professional African studies department, and on Tuesday, he took us to the Hesburgh Library and to the rare books and like artifacts or collections, I think it's kind of what it's uh, known as. And we had an opportunity to look at like rare um, documents between 1800 to about 1864, 1865. And a lot of the documents that we saw that were very fascinating. And the reason why I wanted to bring that up is because some of those exact same documents are some of the exact same things I'm gonna show for our Black History Month event mm -hmm. uh, in the dorm because we felt like it was important to acknowledge these things. I mean, some of the things, and I was telling you about at least one of them mm -hmm. before we started filming, you know, what, what the thing that stood out to me the most was seeing a diagram of a slave ship. And not just a, a slave ship just from like the outside or like the, seeing like, oh, here's the storage room, here's the, the captain's quarters. Like, it right. showed, the reason why it's so important is because it showed a diagram of enslaved Africans in the actual ship. And it showed what they looked like on like, 
literally, they were so conjoined and so close together. You had pregnant women, you had, um, this wasn't shown in the diagram, but there was obviously on the slave ship, you have people that are covered in feces, you have people that are, that are deceased, you know, like literally, and you're, you're seeing how close they were together. So you're literally imagining how traumatizing it was for an enslaved African to be on that slave ship. And what was even more traumatizing to me was seeing um, like these little storage rooms, these small little storage rooms, literally like almost maybe, you know, like, you know, like a standard cubicle is in like office space, mm, maybe yeah. like one or two of those combined, right? And what you saw was that's where they held like the children, the enslaved children. That's where they held them. And that's one of the documents I wanted to show, you know, to these students in my dorm so they can really see like this is what happened during slavery. Mm -hmm. you know, this is the, these are the sort of things that, that aren't always acknowledged. You know, we saw um, bills of sales of, of enslaved Africans, you know, like literally you saw like the name of the, uh, the, name of the enslaved African, mm -hmm. how much they were bought for, what their worth was right. according to enslavers. We were seeing all of that. And I feel like some of those documents were really important to, to show. And so we're definitely going to show those to them. And also another thing that I thought was important was connecting those documents and the history of slavery to modern day. So a short presentation that kind of connects things from like slavery to mass incarceration. How do those two things coincide? How do they connect? Slavery to generational poverty. How do those things connect? Things like that. Right. And I feel like for Black History Month, it's important. I know a lot of the times we like to focus on, since we only have 28 days, we like to focus on like the triumphs of black people. We like to focus on the achievements. At the same time, I also think that it's important to focus on the, the struggles and the battles that we went through, that our ancestors went through, um, because those struggles dictate a lot of the times who we are today and how we are today. And how and where things we lived. are structured and how, as you said, mass incarceration is still a very big problem in the States today. And it has this direct legacy mm -hmm. from slavery. And yep. so, you know, that's one thing I'm really working on for Black History Month, especially for my dorm. And I just felt like that was important to share because Black History Month, is, it's an important month, like I said, like we both said, we got the shortest month of the year for it. You know, pretty much every other ethnic or racial group has at least an entire full month of 30 or 31 days. Yep. And here we are with 28, you know. And some people don't even celebrate the whole, one thing I learned actually recently was that we have a Black History Week. Yeah. I didn't even know that. I, I was like, Black History Week inside of Black History Month was something that was very like brand new to me. Mm -hmm. And I think, is this week Black History Week? It's, yeah, the last week of Black History Month, yep. It's like, you know, that was really interesting to me. I didn't even know that myself. So even as a black person, like I'm still learning, you know, a lot about black history. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous to me, but mm -hmm. I think that's all I have to say. Do you have anything else you want to add? My final remark is even though Black History Month is coming to an end, do not stop learning and do not stop celebrating black history. It's an everyday thing, just how European history is. It's important in every single aspect that you discover. So don't just, Black History Month is over, like it's done, blah, blah, blah. It's never done, because there's always something we can look back on in order to improve where we are today. And that's my final regret. And adding on to that, the last thing I will say is, if you, please, y'all make sure, I'm probably going to put this on our Instagram too. Um, but please, y'all check the description box for this video. I'm going to put a few links to black history books and black mm -hmm. history textbooks and things like that. So that if y'all are interested, y'all can buy some of those books. Y'all can see if y'all can get them for free somewhere else. Um, and it's just so that y'all have an opportunity to really learn more about black history. Because like you said, black history does not end in February. It's something that should continuously be celebrated. It's something that should continuously be learned. It's because I'm going to link some, some textbooks and some other books that I personally like in the description box, y'all. Please make sure y'all check that out. Um, I think that's going to wrap it up. Oh, y'all make sure y'all like and subscribe, uh, especially like the videos. Y'all make sure y'all comment. YouTube has been playing us lately. So y'all seen our views been down recently. And we've had a lot of great content that we really feel like needs to be seen by as many people as possible. So y'all make sure y'all y'all like the video so that YouTube can kind of get us back into their good graces. Right. It was not our fault, but, you know, things happen. Um, that way we have... Um, they'll promote our videos more. The algorithms will change back to normal, so y'all will get the videos on y'all's YouTube feeds a lot quicker. Um, but that's going to wrap it up. As always, black is beautiful, black is love, and black is excellence. Black is also history. Happy Black History Month. Um, we love y'all, and we out. <laughs>